Hello and welcome to the show that keeps you all in the know. Oh, I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Trending, my name is Toka Makingwa and as always, we're brought to you by Airtel. Our guest on today's show is a personal friend. He is an award-winning and extremely talented rapper. Stick around because you get to meet him right after this break. Welcome back to Trending. Our guest today is Rugged Man. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Nice to have you do here, this? finally. Do I do this? Yes, 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 <laughs> of course, of course, of course, of course. Now, before we go for the next break, we have our fabulous fashion segment called Sample Your Swag, okay. which is taken from the Airtel ad campaign of the same name. Okay. Now, all you have to do is to tell us who you're wearing, because you're looking really, really lovely. Thank you. Okay, I can only tell you two out of three. Why? Uh, cause I don't know the name of the designer of the pants. Okay. Okay. So let's do that. Uh, the shoes is Versace. Nice. Thank nice, you. Nice. And the top is uh, one Nigerian designer like this. His name is Michael. Uh, it's called Twentieth September Wear. That's actually mine. Yeah, cause I was about to say <laughs> that. Like, I thought you said. <laughs> it's mine. Don't mind me. I'm just messing with you. Yeah, it's actually a top from one of my. Um, collections. Wow. Yeah. Did you always want to be a fashion designer? Uh, I, I guess, because basically as far back as I can remember, from when I started doing music, I also wanted to have like a clothing line thing. Because back then when I just started music, I used to read magazines like Right On, you know, Black Beat, which is, you know, what Black Beat to America is what Hip Hop World Magazine is to Niger mm. kind of thing. And I see artists and I see like a uh, Method Man back then, the Wu Tang Clan had. Said, all of thank them you, like, yeah, Rocker Wear, Sean John, yeah. Johnny Blaze, and I just thought to myself, yeah, Franchise, you know, it could happen. Good. Yeah. Cool stuff. So let's go on a quick break. When we come back, the interview officially begins. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Trending on Hip TV. You are from Abia State, but you have a yep. very English name, Michael uh, Stevens. Yeah. Is that what people from Abia State? Uh, not really. I guess I just, I'm just too in tune with the Western world, kind okay. of. Because we know Chuck Norris, we know Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt's really not their names, kind of thing. So that's well, what we're Pitt, doing. Well, Brad Pitt, that's his name. Well, some of them have, you know, the names they know them for, yeah. not their real like names. Like Bond. Bond is a title. Oh, no, that's a title. Yeah. yeah. No, but basically, mine is simple. It's easy. Um, Stevens is actually my father's Christian name. Okay. So just for the entertainment thing, I took that. My name is actually Michael Ugochuku Ojigwe Eke. Oh. Then I put my father's Christian name, Stevens. Stevens, so that's Michael Stevens. And you have been in this industry now for a very, very long time. Give or time. take 11 years. 1989? No. <laughs> my first song came out in 99. Yeah, 1999, yeah. I don't know why I thought 89. Now, how did all of this begin for you? I like music. Okay. I like music. I have an uncle who, um, whenever he travels, he comes home with tapes of um, UMTV raps, Rap City. So I just started listening to, you know, watching the musical videos and then liking the music. And then I started off by writing out the lyrics to the songs that I hear. And I like all sorts of music, trust me. I listen to Fuji, I listen to reggae, mm -hmm. I listen to R&B, I listen to classical music, even Be Beethoven and stuff. You know, but rap just kind of like took me because I love the word play. Mm. You know, you have different styles of rap. You have people who rap really fast, you have people who rap really slow. And then some people will say one thing and mean two different things. That's what I mean by word play. Mm. So that kind of like got me and I really, really like rap. So you release all your uh, music under your own record label called... E Rocket, Rocket Records, yes. What is it like having your own label and being the master of your own uh, stuff? It's good. It's good in the sense that you get to make all the decisions. You know, but then again, sometimes you do need other people to come in to do stuff for you. And I actually didn't set out to start my own label. I actually tried getting on a particular label, but it just didn't work. Okay. I found out I knew a bit... I knew more than they did mm. and they were kind of like holding me back so I just went into it myself and I just started Rugged Records and everything I've released has been on Rugged Records. Okay, so you have a new single out right now featuring I did it on look. Yep. Uh, it was trending on Twitter, <laughs> Billboard 140. I, How did that collaboration come about? 
Um, the collaboration, I've always wanted to do a song with One Day. One Day to me is like the best young His voice singer. One Day is one day is like wonderful basically there's this thing i always say if your heart beats loud enough for one day to hear he'll sing to it really? trust me that's the day i met him i played like six instrumentals for him one day sang six different choruses for each beat that's how good he is so i always wanted to do a song with him when i met, I met tyrone i wanted to i told him okay look i've been away for a while i need to do i need to drop a song and tyrone was like he played me a couple of beats and when i heard that particular beat I said, okay, fine, this is something I need. And this is something I know one day will be good mm, on. Mm. I sent it to one day, he was in UK then. I sent it to him and he just replied me and said, Baba, this is it, I'm on it. Oh, nice. So, and me being me, I wanted, I wanted, I don't like telling people what to do or how yeah. to do it. So I just told him, you know what, do your thing on the beat and when you're done, let me know, let me have it, then I can go, I can vibe with you. Mm. So he came up with the hook and then I just went That's with it. That's nice. Now talking about being away for a while, you have been away for a while. What have you been up to? Yeah. Um, I've been doing a whole lot of stuff. Running my label, as in my record label. I have an artist I signed, his name is M. Brio. I was working on this project. I've been working and I'm still working on this project. Mm. You know, we released a couple of songs, um, Remote. He's his most popular one, Remote, and then um, he has Parole. Uh, Parole was one of the most played songs on the Big Brother Africa 2013. Mm. It was, you know, big there. And then most recently, I released a song featuring Pato Rankin. It's called Hallelujah. Okay. Yeah, we shot the video a couple of days ago, so you'll probably be seeing it here soon. So I've been working on Embryo's project, and then I've also been working on the clothing line. Yeah, for someone who's been away, the music industry has evolved. You know, it's yeah. the game is not the same. Oh, definitely. You know, how was it easing yourself back into this music industry? And what do you feel about the industry right now? Mm, it was easy for me to ease myself back in because being away doesn't mean I wasn't listening or I wasn't watching. I'm always watching. I'm like the big brother of the Nigerian music industry. I'm always watching. So what I do, what I did was watch what was going on. How do I come back in? Working with a younger artist, working with a very good young artist, very good. That's one day. Then working with a very good producer, Tyrone, and we did it. Shayman did the mix. It was crazy. Yeah. If you, my song Baraja, does this particular line I ended with. I say, I, I said, I blend with the trend. Stay forever like culture. You better make a move because I didn't watch you like vulture. I'm always watching. So I knew I knew what I needed to do to get back in. Mm. I knew I needed a good song. I knew I needed a good video, and which was what I did. Mm. So that's why I was, I was surprised at the billboard part of it. But it trending and all, yeah, I knew that was, gonna, that was about happen. to happen. You know? Right. So for those who are sitting at home right now who are thinking the same thing, how do I ease myself back into the industry? He just gave you 101 on how to get back on your game. <laughs> now, you were also seen to be quite a hardcore rapper. Now, some people have said that, you know, you've gone quite commercial. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that? I don't know what they're talking about. Because basically, for me, I've always been me. I've always been doing music. I do music the way I feel music. I do music the way I want to feel music. If I want to sing, I sing. If I want to rap, I rap. Mm. I'm not doing it to satisfy a certain number of people i'm trying to cut across to everybody because mm. if you have an album that you know you want to cater for only a certain you know set of people that's not doing music you want to sell mm. if you want to make music you want to sell look you have your bars you have houses you have evils you have the english you have the americans you have the jamaicans so basically you need to look for a way to give them a bit of everything. Mm. And then I, I really don't understand what people mean by commercial because commercial, if you are in the States, for instance, okay. record labels are looking for... For how to make money, yeah? This Thank song. you. And I think that's what it's called commercial, right? And I think Which is, to me, it's just Nigerians being short-sighted, basically. Okay. And it's especially the artists. Some of those artists who say you're selling out or you're going all commercial. Because if they say you're going commercial, when you do commercial, it means you're selling, yeah? It's, or your, you know, it's sellable. It's, yeah. Thank you, and that's the business, yeah. Because basically, if you don't make money, how do you record? How do you shoot videos? And how do you promote? True that. And how do you pay your bills? True so, man, I forget all that selling out. No, you know what I say? You say you recommend you're selling out. I say at least I'm selling. That's true. All right, so let's go on a quick break and catch up with what's trending today. We'll be right back. On what's trending today?
A week after the birth of her son, singer Kelly Rowland gushes about her newborn Titan Jewel Weatherspoon. I have been completely on a high getting to know my son Titan. I'm so in love, I could look at him 24 hours a day. Welcome back to Training with Heap TV. It's time for our Fast Fire Questions, where I get to ask you as many questions as I can in 60 seconds. Are you ready? Okay. Uh, bold or full head? Full head. Chicken or beef? Chicken. Meat or chicken pie? Chicken pie. When was the last time you brushed your teeth? This morning. Do you believe in love with fast sides? Yes. Married or single? Single. When was the last time you told a lie? Don't remember. What's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you? Forgot my lines on stage. Island or mainland? Mainland. Difference between pure water and sachet water? No difference. Describe yourself in one word. Rugged. What's your date of birth? 20th September. Who's your favorite designer? 20th September. How many tattoos do you have? None. How many piercings do you have? One. What yeah. is your middle name? Ugo Choku. Your definition of music in one word? Music. In one word? <laughs> One word. All right, describe yourself in one word. Down to earth. So in the past, you were quite controversial when it came to Nigerian issues. You mm -hmm. used to speak out a lot. Mm -hmm. Now you have so many people running for office. Some your counterparts, some, you know, yeah. Just so many people who are going in for office. How does that make you feel? Do you see yourself doing the same? Well, um, I've always been vocal when it comes to Nigerian issues, and I still am. But I always prefer to do it when it'll make an impact kind of thing. And then, um, yes, the industry, art entertainers going into politics. I started political science, so if anybody has a right to go into politics, it's me. I don't know what they started, but I know about me. But I'm not going into politics, it's not me, really. But then the only thing is, I just keep, you know, I wanted to, I won't lie to you, when I saw Julius Argo's poster, I actually thought it was for his show. Mm. I thought it was for a show. Agaji, no best. <laughs> I thought it was for a show. You know, and then when I found out it was actually serious, I'm like, oh, okay. So I just thought to myself, now imagine a situation where, okay, there's a House of Assembly and then Gino Tago just walks in. Mm. It's like me seeing an Eddie Murphy movie, no matter how serious he tries to be in the movie. I always laugh. But I don't, I mean, remember you understand? Arnold, Swash Swash no, he was an actor, not a comedian. There's yeah. a difference. It's like Mr. Ibu trying to run for a governor uh, kind of thing. Uh, no, for everybody. He doesn't even have to say anything for you to laugh. He just looks at you and you laugh. Uh, so I was now wondering how he was going to like juggle that. that. You know, because mm -hmm. a lot of people in the House of Assembly, I'm sure Jido, Agaji has performed for a lot of them. Yeah. And then Apart all of them. Most of your politicians are comedians as well. You understand. And the then, things they say. <laughs> and then another major thing for me is if you're going to go into politics, aren't you supposed to have like been like an understudy? You know, like you should have been like doing a whole lot of stuff with polit politicians and then, you know, maybe uh, try the local government level first. You don't just jump from being an entertainer to run for House of Assembly. Mm -hmm. That okay. kind of thing. You need to, you like when you're into music, they say you need to pay your dues. Mm -hmm. So have you guys paid your political dues? Nice question. Okay, so what next uh, uh, for Rocket Man? Uh, it's all about Embryo, my artist. We shot the, his new song just came out, Hallelujah, featuring Pato Rankin. Uh, we shot the video, Paul Gambit. The same Paul Gambit shot the video for Agidi, me featuring Wandeko. So um, he sh we already shot the video for Hallelujah, Embryo, featuring Pato Rankin. And the next song that's going to be out is Embryo, featuring Olamide. So he's been doing, I've been doing a lot of stuff for him. Mm. And then also the clothing line, the 20th September, where the first other things coming out are... I have a song called Eight Figures I did with Reminisce. Mm. In the video, we both wore black, you know, like this, but black and gold. So, like, the first set of things, eight figures. So, the first set of things coming out from the clothing line are eight figures, hoodies, eight figures, varsity jackets, which a lot of people have been seeing. Mm. You know, um, Two Faces wore his, Daniela Mokachi wore his, you know, the African comedians in America, touts, they wore theirs, you know, and, you know, so basically, Eight figures hoodies, eight figures versus jackets, and eight figures face caps, snapbacks. 
and then after a while it's going to go out for sale like in the next three weeks oh nice well yeah. done well done with all of that uh you are a past heady winner you've won the headers before yep how important is it as an artist and how did that affect your career uh basically the last one i won was the best rap album trust me that was good because like i said earlier it's when you do music a friend of mine, or no, someone online said that the Ruggedy Baba album was a total package because basically I had a bit of rock, a bit of Fuji, a bit of, you know, the rap, the R&B, then I had a Jamaican artist on it, then Style G. So basically it was a total package. So to me, that was work done and work appreciated and work yes. rewarded. That's a good one. Yeah. Thank you for coming by. It's been no really problem. lovely chatting with you. Let's check out our video of the day. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Training on Heat TV. It is now time for nasty comments and Rugged Man is in a building. Any nasty ones? Um, you can find out yourself. Okay. Uh, do I need, can I skip some? No, you have to. <laughs> okay, you see, that's the thing. Someone's saying, Rugged, quit it already. You're trying too hard and it's still not coming out nice. Your time don't pass. Admit that fact. You are now fully in the same class with Idris Abdul Karim and Tony Tatrila Dem. Say it was all these boring tunes I beg. And his name is Anonymous. I could have said something to you if you were actually a human being because you could be an automated thing. So maybe when you, you know, let me know who you are, then I'll tell you. But the fact is, I am still rugged man. Idris Abdul Karim Tony Tatrila, Nigerian legends. And you are Anonymous. Okay. Brenda Craig said, not impressed, don't waste time on the track. Please, you used to admire Raghidi Baba about his game, but he's not upping his game at all. Truth is bitter, track is rubbish. I don't know what track you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. If it's uh, my most recent track, Agidi featuring One Day Cold, has trend, been trending, mm. it's been on charts. Even billboards, the video is out, trending, so I don't know what you're talking about. You need to press refresh. That uh, anonymous, I normally wouldn't read this because I don't talk to faceless people, but this one now is a nameless person. That awkward listening moment when you realize the featured actually had most of the time than the owner of the track. Which track? You guys need to be specific so we know. You know, don't, don't, don't just let your beef blind your, you know, rational thinking. Mm. You understand? So basically, what I always do, what I always say is support your own unless it's really, 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 really terrible. Then you can criticize. Do what I do. Do what I did in a hair. I criticized, yes. I named names and all that. But then it worked for the industry at the end of the day. You understand? So don't just hide behind, uh, I call them Twitter internet gangsters mm -hmm. you know they're probably sitting somewhere it's probably like two feet tall mm -hmm. but typing like hercules yeah that kind of thing but do your thing do your do you because i'm doing me toka is doing her look at her looking all beautiful Thank you. and then okay. you know let's let's move let, from nasty comments let me make a very nice comment. On a better note, let me not say on a lighter note. You're looking really good today. Thank you. As okay. usual. Thank you very much. No I problem. appreciate it. And it's really, really, really lovely, lovely chatting with you and catching up with you. Same here. It's so been you a while. totally come back. Let's know when the, you know, the clothing, clothing line is fully out Definitely. so we can purchase some as well. I will give you, no, I will give you one. Oh, from, well, oh, we're friends. We've been friends yes, for a while. Yes, we have. So for quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> All right, people, let's catch up with our top five most expensive weddings ever. On today's top five most expensive celebrity weddings. At number five, we have David Guest and Liza Minnelli. The couple who spent an estimated $4.2 million also spent a further $700,000 on flowers and $40,000 on their wedding cake. At number four, we have Manchester United player Wayne Rooney who married his childhood sweetheart, Colleen McLaughlin, in 2008 at an estimated cost of £5.2 million. 
number three, we have the heir to the English throne, Prince William, who married Kate Middleton in a very public and very grand event, which cost an estimated 22 million pounds and an estimated two billion people tuned in from all over the world to watch the ceremony. And our number two today aren't necessarily household names, but are part of the two richest families in the world. Venetia Mittal and Amit Bhatia had one of the most expensive modern day Indian weddings, which cost an estimated $60 million. And today's number one most expensive wedding is a throwback with Prince Charles and the late Lady Diana, whose fairy tale wedding cost an estimated 72 million pounds and the bride famously wore a 20 foot veil. That's all we have on the show today. Thank you guys for tuning in and massive shout out to Rugged for coming by. Remember that you can join this conversation live. All you have to do is to go to www.twitter.com forward slash heap TV. You can also follow us on Instagram. We are at trending on heap TV. Try something new today. Life is for the leaving. Join us again tomorrow for another exciting episode of Trending. Goodbye.